You request it, we deliver it. Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus versus Apple iPhone SE coming up right now. Let's go. Oh, what is up guys this is Nick here from everything tech help you to master your technology and welcome to the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus versus the Apple iPhone SE now right out of the gate I know that these guys are not that comparable in terms of their you know design obviously the S8 Plus is probably the best looking smartphone in the world right now and the iPhone SE is basically the four inch iconic design from Apple but these devices might be a little bit closer in terms of the speed department and if you got an iPhone SE and you're thinking about buying an S8 Plus or you're thinking about upgrading or maybe just getting an S8 Plus as a sidekick phone to try out this new innovation here with the infinity edge display this might be a useful video for you or maybe just maybe you're like you know what should I get an iPhone SE or a Galaxy S8 the S8 comes in at about 720 bucks the S8 plus about 850 the top of the line SE is about 500 bucks so you're talking only a 200 bucks difference here between this and this on the top end so let's go ahead and boot these guys up to get started in three two and one let's go and you can see Galaxy S8 Plus shows its logo first there. The iPhone SE has been one of the fastest booting phones I've ever seen, but will it show the same here versus the Samsung S8 Plus? This is also a very fast Android booting device, probably the fastest Android booting device I've ever seen. So the iPhone SE takes the boot up test here while we're still waiting on the S8 Plus. So the S8 Plus just slightly behind here. Every Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus ships with Android 7.0 Nougat and it's no different here on my S8 Plus. Over here on the iPhone SE, I do have public beta 2 iOS 10.3 three here so not public beta 3 not the latest beta version but it's just about the same in terms of speed as the official version so this is still relevant here in terms of the software here now before we go into the application test I do want to let you guys know that I am going to be putting the Galaxy S8 Plus on high performance mode I also want to let you guys know that the Galaxy S8 Plus I tweaked all the animations and they are all off here I also turned off reduce motion here for the iPhone SE, as you can see right there, there's no animation there. Also, low battery power mode is off on the iPhone SE, and we are on the same Wi-Fi network. With that being said, let's begin with this speed test. Okay, so let's begin with the Play Store in the App Store, and you can see the, looks like the SE was tied with the S8 there. Coming home, the S8 home first. Let's go into Instagram. And remember that the S8 does have, looks like the S8 won that one. It does have a Snapdragon 835 CPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, Android 7.0. Over here on the SE, Apple A9 chipset that's clocked in at 1.84 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM across a 4 inch screen here. Over here on Twitter, let's see what happens. And you can see the Galaxy S8 Plus wins that. Coming home here, let's go into eBay. And SE takes that one, so they're trading blows here. Let's go into Amazon. And you can see the iPhone SE takes the S8 Plus on Amazon. Animations are both turned off on both. Let's go into the Facebook app. And Galaxy S8 Plus back again with a win. Let's go into YouTube. And you can see iPhone SE with the win there. Coming home here, let's go into Wikipedia. And the SE takes the S8 Plus. So SE, very strong performance here for the SE. The SE is about one year old phone here. Galaxy S8 Plus takes that. So the SE is not very outdated in terms of its power. And you can see the SE takes the S8 Plus there. Coming home, let's go into a Pi Geek, Epic Geek. And you can see the SE again. So the SE still might be the faster phone here. But remember, these speed tests are just for speed. That doesn't make the SE a better phone. Let's go home here and let's go into speed test because honestly, personally, just me, I would never buy an SE over at Galaxy S8. But that's just my take. You might differ and I understand if you love Apple and you think the SE is better. That's totally cool too. But for me, no way. Let's go into Pokemon Go and you can see, looks like the SA Plus first on the SE and we're still waiting on the SE there. Still waiting. Very shocking here that the SE is taking this long to load. So destroyed the SE there on Pokemon Go. Let's go into Dead Trigger. And 
the S8 again. About the same. Actually, the SE caught up. So the SE caught up to the S8. I'm going to call that one about a draw. But the S8 is a monster in terms of gaming performance for Android. Let's go into Geekbench. And you can see Geekbench a little slightly faster there on the SE. Let's come home here. Let's go into Temple Run. And you can see... S8 first there, so shocking performance on the games there for the S8, but those were light casual games. If you guys want to see a gaming review between these two, like a gaming speed test like we did with this test, but with gaming, let me know down below in the comments. I'll schedule that in. So let's go ahead now and run a multitasking test. So you can see Play Store, App Store, about the same. Coming home here, S8 back home first. Let's go into the Instagram. S8 had to reload, so SE takes that one. Twitter. SE takes that one. eBay. SE again. Coming home here. Let's go on Amazon. SE again. So come on, Samsung with this RAM management here. Let's go into Facebook. And coming home. Let's go into YouTube. And you can see S8 reloading again. So unfortunately, the Snapdragon version is still not a beast yet in RAM management. Not the best out there yet. So play newsstand. And you can see iPhone SE again. Lightroom. Man, I can hear all the SE boys. I like, let's get it. Let's get it, Sammy boy. What's up now? I can hear you all down there. Oh, man. Let's go into a Pi Geek. And you can see SE again. Coming home. Uber. And in this test, this looks like the SE is totally destroying the SA+. Plus, but in real world practice, this stuff doesn't really bother you too much in day to day. Trust me. Going into speed test. The SE again, and let's go into CPUZ. We didn't even open those apps, so that doesn't matter. Let's go to Pokemon Go, and the SE did not load Pokemon Go first, but it had it better in RAM management. So the S8 seems to be a very fast phone on the first application opening, but in terms of RAM management, iOS is still hard to beat. Going into Dead Trigger, again, SE ready to go. So does that make the SE a better gaming phone? Absolutely not, because the gaming experience on the S8 Plus or S8 is very immersive with the curved edges. I think gamers will enjoy the S8 Plus a lot more, regardless if they gotta wait a second or more. The gaming experience on this little four inch screen, not even QHD, although very fast and smooth, there's just there's just no comparison. You, you cannot have as much of an enjoyable experience on a screen that small and that low resolution versus a screen this big, immersive, and super AMOLED. I mean, the gaming experience, I think most people would agree, is just going to be more enjoyable on the S8 Plus, even if they got to wait a second longer for the app to open. Let's go into Geekbench, and you can see iPhone SE and Temple Run. So the clear winner in RAM management, as my other videos have shown, even the 5S kept up with the SA Plus in RAM management and even beat it in some areas. The RAM management for iOS is just still better. And, you know, I know a lot of people have been saying, Nick, Exynos, Exynos, Exynos. I have an Exynos Galaxy Note 5. I've had Exynos S8s in the past, or not S8s, but Samsung's in the past. Exynos does not change the fact that iOS still does better RAM management pretty much than all Android devices. This is what I've seen in all my experience uses phones. This is just what I've seen. If you don't agree, that's fine, but I'm telling you what I've experienced. iOS is the way to go if you want extremely optimized RAM management, and a lot of people would agree with that. Now, in terms of general everyday functioning, just swiping through the UI, both are on par in that regard. Um, the Galaxy S8 Plus has a little bit of a more of a buttery smooth effect because because of the edge. It just rolls off the edge there. You can see the applications. It's just this illusory experience and rolling your finger off the edge of this, this device just feels luxurious. It feels premium, high tech, innovative, you know, out of this world. It just feels like the future of smartphones. This right here, very smooth, but the edges are sharp. So if you hold it like this, you can feel your thumb rolling off the sharp edge right here. So this is not the most, you know, buttery smooth feeling phone ever, but it's one of the fastest devices I've ever laid hands on. If you just want a standard size phone, you don't want this big old computer pocket computer in your pocket. The SE is the monster B small phone on the planet right now. Let's go ahead and open some browser tests. Now I do realize that we made a mistake in the last video. You know, we don't always get everything perfect. And I spelled Sam Smung or whatever I spelled. I spelled it wrong. And we're going to make sure we don't make that mistake here. We're going to start with Sam Smung in this video <laughs> right here. So Samsung up there. Sam Sung over here. Make sure that spells Samsung. And we're going to hit go here in three, two, and go. 
And whoever hasn't watched it already, I've done the Galaxy S8 Plus versus the iPhone 5S versus the 7 Plus so far. More comparisons coming soon. Comment what you'd like to see below. The SE looks to have took that website loading though. Let's go into Yahoo over here, yahoo.com. Yahoo.com here, SE, and let's go. And the S8 Plus. So they're gonna trade blows in browsing. So overall, what has been the moral of this speed test story here. The multitasking is a clear win for the iPhone SE. The first application opening times, I think the S8 Plus just edges the SE in the first app opening, so when you first open the apps. So they're kinda, you know, toss up here and there. The boot up test, the SE, but the boot up test, it's not a really a big deal. How many people boot up their phone 17 times a day? We usually boot our phones up once a week, maybe turn it off, maybe if it dies. You know, not all of us are booting our phones up all the time. Honestly, I leave my phone on most of the time. And if it's your only phone, you're not using multiple phones, I don't see myself booting my phone up that much. So that's not a huge deal, but the SE did win there by one second. In terms of the browser, like we already talked about, they're trading blows there in the website loading, so that's gonna be a similar experience. But let's test the fingerprint scanners. So this controversial, you know, back fingerprint scanner actually hasn't been a big deal to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and test it against the SEs here. We did this in the fingerprint scanner, but for those of you who haven't watched it, we're gonna do it here again. So there's the fingerprint scanner, and let's go. And you see the S8 is already open, but on here I have to physically press it to open it. Now people have been saying, no, there's that rest of finger home button. It doesn't matter that you can put the rest of finger to home button. That just means that when you open it, that little lock thing's unlocked so you can just go right in. That has nothing to do with the fact that you still have to physically press this button to light the screen up and then press it to unlock. It's not a rest fingerprint. So you see right there, I'm resting it right there and nothing's happening. I actually have to physically press it and then open it like that. So the S8 Plus, regardless of the fact of the location of the fingerprint scanner, is a faster fingerprint scanner. So it wins there. All right guys, so what about the camera speed on both devices? So let's go to cameras on both devices and you see the SE and S8 Plus about the same in terms of opening the application. Let's go ahead and hit the picture. And you can see, I don't see any difference there in terms of snapping pictures. Now one thing I do like about the S8 Plus is to easily flip through the camera like this. You can argue this is not needed on a, such a small smartphone like the SE and the flip the camera is right there so it's just as easy. I just kind of like the fact that I could just flip it like that but that's just my personal take. So camera picture taking speed is about the same. So that pretty much wraps the speed test up of the Galaxy S8 Plus versus the Apple iPhone SE. The winner here is not very clear. The S8 Plus wins in some areas, the Apple iPhone SE in other. Now for raw speed, I do think the, you know, the iPhone SE is just a little bit faster than the Galaxy S8 Plus stock. Now if you go ahead and put a ROM on here, a custom kernel, you tweak it, you get a little bit into your device, of course you're gonna get more power out of the Galaxy S8 Plus. Four gigs of RAM, sometimes the S8 Plus is going to be a faster phone. Now that's, that's just what it is like in the real world for me. On paper, the S8 Plus destroys the SE, but in the real world practice, the SE is a raw dog speed in that regard. So that's my take on it. Galaxy S8 Plus versus iPhone SE speed test. I'm gonna do a full comparison between these two that has nothing to do all the way about just speed. This was just a speed test. Who is your winner? Comment it down below in the comment section of this video. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Nick here helped you to master your technology. Be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next one and peace.